hello students welcome to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem which says that the frame is subjected to the load of 4 kN which acts on member a b d at d determine the required diameter of the pins at d and c if the allowable shear stress for the material is 40 MPa. Pin C is subjected to double shear, whereas pin D is subjected to single shear. So we are given this frame and uh, this ABD member is subjected to 4 kN force. And we are required to find the diameters of uh, pins C and D. And whereas pin C is subjected to double shear, whereas pin D is subjected to single shear. So now in order to find the diameters of pin C and D, we have to find the forces that are applied on pin C and pin D. So for that, I'm going to separate this uh, DCE member and ABD member. And here I have drawn the free body diagram. The 4 kN force is, is the problem says that the 4 kN force is acting on ABD. So it is only it will only appear in the free body diagram of ABD. So here at D, um, let's say that this is the reaction force, uh, or we can say this is the force of uh, this ABD on this member, and let's say this is the dx and this is dy. So the, these two are the action and reaction forces, so they must act in the opposite direction. So this dx is the force of this member on this one. And similarly, this dy is the force of this member on this ABD. And let's say that um, this BC member, this is in tension, let's say. So if it is in tension, then, uh, then it's going to apply the force on a pin C in this direction. So if it is going to apply the force on pin C in this direction, so is a reaction pin C will apply the force on this BC member in this direction. So let's say that this BC member is in uh, tension. And at E we have the roller support, so we will have EY support reaction. And similarly at A we have the pin support, so we will have AX and AY reaction. And as you guys can see that uh, this distance and this distance, this is equal, right? This is 1.5 and this is 1.5. So this angle and this angle, they, they are equal as well. And this angle is 45 degrees. So we can say that this BC force and this, they are making 45 degree angle here. So we can say that this angle is 45. And similarly, this angle is 45 degrees. So now we are going to apply, first I'm going to consider that DCE member. And for DCA member, if we apply the sum of the moment about point E equals to zero, if we apply this equilibrium condition, the counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive. Now, as you guys can see that um, uh, this dy is producing the counterclockwise moment about point E. So we will have um, dy multiplied by the moment arm. So the moment arm for dy from that point e is this distance which is the length of this dca member which is 2.5 so we will multiply this with 2.5 so dy into 2.5 similarly uh, this fbc will have two components it will have one component in this direction and it will have one component in this direction so the horizontal component is not going to produce the moment about point e since it is passing through that point e so this component is producing the moment about point E and this is the sine component. So we can say that FBC and it is producing this component is producing the clockwise moment. This is producing the clockwise moment and its moment arm is one meter. So we can say that uh, minus FBC sine of 45 and its moment arm is one meter. So we will multiply this with one and this is equals to zero. So from this equation, we can say that dy is equal to fbc sine of 45 divided by 2.5. This is, let's say, equation number one. 
Similarly, if we apply the sum of the forces in the x, that must be equal to 0 towards the right is our positive x, considering again that DCE member. So now we can say that uh, this dx is in the negative x, so you will write minus dx, and the cost component of FBC is in the positive x, so you will write plus FBC cause of 45, this is equal to 0. And from this we can say that dx is equal to FBC cause of 45 degrees. Let's say this is equation number 2. Now considering ABD member, if we consider ABD member, We need to consider ABD member since here we have uh, two equations and three unknowns, dy, dx, and fbc. They are three unknowns, so we cannot solve them. We need one another equation. So if we consider this ABD member and if we apply the sum of the moment about point A, so if we apply the sum of the moment about point A, that must be equal to zero since the frame is in equilibrium. Counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive. So now as you guys can see that um, this dx is this dx is producing the clockwise moment so you'll write minus dx and the moment arm of this dx from that point a is this distance which is 3 meters so we can say 3 into dx similarly um, the cost component of this 4 kilonewton is producing the counterclockwise moment this component uh, of 4 kilonewton is not going to produce the moment, so only the cost component is producing the moment, and that moment is in the counterclockwise direction. So we can say plus 4 kilonewton cos of 45 multiplied by 3. The moment arm is 3 for the cost component, so we can say this is 3. And similarly, uh, we will have one component of FBC in this direction, and we will have one component in this direction. This one is the cost component, this one is the sign component, the sign component is producing the counterclockwise moment. So we can say that plus FBC uh, sine of 45 and the moment arm of this component which is producing the moment is this which is 1.5. So we will multiply this with 1.5 and this is equal to 0. So now in this equation, as you guys can see, we know <coughs> dx in terms of fbc. So in this equation, we have two unknowns, fbc and dx. So if I substitute this dx in this equation, we will be able to find fbc. So we can rearrange this equation. I can write this on the other side of equation since this is constant. So we can say that this will be, let me write it is equal to minus So this will be cancelled out from this side and similarly substituting um, dx by this. So we can say that this will be 3 times fbc cos of 45 degrees. So now we can say that this is minus 3 FBC cos of 45, this is plus 1.5 FBC sine of 45, this is equal to minus 4 cos of 45 into 3, or we can say it is 12 from this 4 into 3 is 12, right? So 12 cos of 45. Now, if I take FBC common from both of these terms, if I take FBC common from both of these terms, we, we will have the equation like this. So, the equation will look like this. So, let's find everything. Let's find this in the brackets. So, this is minus 3, minus 3 cos of 45 plus 1.5 sine of 45. This gives us minus 1.06, so minus 1.06 FBC equals to minus 12 cos of 45, minus will cancel out, dividing both sides by 
we will get FBC. So FBC is equal to 12 cos of 45 divided by 1.06. So this gives me FBC equals to 8 kilonewton. FBC is equal to 8 kilonewton. The, uton, the, the units will be in kilonewtons because uh, here this 4 was in kilonewtons. So FBC is in uh, FBC is equal to 8 kilonewtons uh, and this is the force which is applied on the BC member. So FBC is equal to 8 kilonewton and similarly if we want to find since we want to find the dia of uh, spin C and D so we must find dx and dy. So now putting this FBC value in these two equation we will be able to find dx. So now from this equation we can say that dx is equal to FBC is 8 kilonewton so 8 cos of 45 so we can say that 8 cos of 45 dx is 5.66 kilonewton and similarly putting in this equation dy will be equal to so fbc is 8 sine of 45 divided by 2.5 so this gives me 2.26 kilonewton this is dy this is dx now since we want to find the diameters of pin C and D, so it is said that pin C is subjected to double shear. So now if I draw the free body diagram of pin C, let's say, let's say this is pin C, this is let's say pin C and uh, the force applied on pin C is 8 kN. So let's say that this is the force applied on pin C, let me draw that FBC. So this is F B C equals to 8 kilonewton and it is subjected to pin C is subjected to double shear. So if it is subjected to double shear, we will have the shear force on both the sides of the pin. So let's say this is V C and this is V C. So now if we apply the sum of the forces in this direction, so we can say that 2 times V C minus F B C which is 8 kilonewton is equal to 0 and from this we can say that we see is equal to 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4 kilonewton and now we are given the allowable shear stress for both the materials for pin c and d which is 40 megapascal so we can say that ta allowable for pin c for pin c we see is 4 kilonewton remember and ta allowable is 40 megapascal and that will be equal to vc divided by the area of pin c so the area of pin c will be pi divided by 4 dia of c square and this is equal to 40 megapascal so 40 into 10 raised to the power 6 pascal is newton per meter square now we know vc we know vc so vc is 4 kilonewton And or we can say 4 into 10 raised to the power 3 Newton. So if we rearrange this equation, we will have dc square equal to 4 into 10 raised to the power 3 divided by pi divided by 4 into 40 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 6. And this will be meter square. And if we take the square roots on both sides of the equation, we will find the required dia of pin C which is subjected to double shear. So 4 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 divided by pi divided by 4 multiplied by 40 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 6 and this gives us dc equals to 0 0.0118 8 meters and if we convert this into mm so we, if we convert this into mm we can say that uh, 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm so we will multiply our answer with 1000 so multiply by 1000 so 11.284 mm this is the dia of pin c and similarly for pin D, we have to find the resultant force on pin D. So we have to find 
the resultant of dx and dy so let me write that for pin d the resultant force will be dx square plus dy square using the Pythagoras theorem so we can say that we can directly find this using calculator so dx is 5.66 square dy is 2.26 square this gives us d equals to 6.094 so d is equal to 6.094 now pin d is subjected to single shear so let's say again if we draw the free body diagram of uh, pin d So the resultant of dx and dy is um, acting in this direction, like this, right? So it is acting in this direction. So we can say that um, that d force is acting in this direction. So we can say that this is the d force, which is equal to 6.094. And the shear force, since it is subject to a single shear, so it will have a shear force, let's say, in this direction. So this is Vd. So this means that Vd is equal to that D force. So we can say that Vd is equal to D equals to 6.094. And since we are given the allowable shear stress, so tri allowable is 40 megapascal. And again, that will be equal to Vd. So Vd is 6.094 divided by the area of pin D. So that will be pi divided by 4 dia of d square this will be 6.094 into 10 raised to the power 3 equals to 40 megapascal so 40 into 10 raised to the power 6 newton per meter square this is in newtons units will cancel out and we can say that dia of d square will be equal to 6.094 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 divided by pi divided by 4 40 into 10 raised to the power 6 and if we take the square root we will be able to find the dia of that pin d which is subjected to a single share so 6.094 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 divided by pi divided by 4 multiply by 40 multiply by 10 raised to the power 6 so this gives us dia of pin d equals to 0 0.01397 let's say in meters and if you multiply it with thousands we will have the answer in mm so dia of pin D is equal to 13.927 mm. So for the allowable shear stress for both the pins of 40 megapascal, the dia of C which is subjected to double shear must be 11.284 mm and the dia of pin D which is subjected to a single shear must be 13.927 mm. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibbler.